Hace Inglés presenta Into the Story, el podcast para aprender inglés con historias reales contadas por gente de todo el mundo. Today's story is about baking sourdough bread. La historia de hoy trata sobre la preparación de pan de masa madre. Os presento a la protagonista de la historia de hoy. Erika es de Eslovenia y desde que era pequeña siempre le había gustado hacer pan en casa con su abuela. And on Fridays we would always make bread in her wood burning oven. And I think this is how my love for baking started. I think it's expressing myself through something that tastes good. Erica now lives in Switzerland, where she rediscovered her love for preparing cakes and bread last year during lockdown. Erica was searching for a hobby that could help her pass the time indoors. Then one day her partner introduced her to sourdough bread. Erica was curious about the science of sourdough bread baking and so she decided to start her own bread making project. She soon discovered how much she enjoyed being part of the growing sourdough baking community. Sigue escuchando para escuchar a Erika describir por qué el pan de masa madre es tan especial y por qué en Suiza se ha abierto un hotel de masa madre. Hi listeners, I wanted to celebrate with you that we have reached 50,000 listens and today is our 30th episode and the last of season 2. We're already busy preparing the next season, so stay tuned to your podcast feed. Mientras tanto, nos vas a ayudar un montón suscribiéndote y dejándonos cinco estrellas. Thank you so much for your support. Ok, antes de escuchar la historia, veamos cinco palabras y expresiones interesantes que utiliza Erica en este episodio. Firstly, dough, spelt D-O-U-G-H. Dough in English refers to la masa, the mixture of flour and water used to make bread. In today's episode, Erica will use a lot of bread-related vocabulary. Listen out for her talking about stretching the dough, estirar la masa, and kneading the dough, meaning amasar la masa. Take care with the silent letters in the verb knead, which is spelled K-N-E-A-D. Next, to pop up. To pop up is a phrasal verb meaning to appear or happen suddenly. You could say in English that I saw a notification pop up on my computer screen or an opportunity to work overseas popped up. It appeared. To pop up. Next, a loaf of bread. The word loaf in English is used to refer to the particular shape of bread before it is cut into slices. In español diríamos pan de molde, a loaf of bread. The next expression is to give in. To give in to someone or something usually means one of two things. First, it can mean to stop fighting or arguing. Or, it can also mean to admit defeat. For example, in English, you can give in to the temptation and eat a second serving of chocolate cake. Or, you can give in to your opponent during a football match, meaning that you admit that your opponent wins the game. To give in. And finally, to be hooked. A hook literally means un gancho. But the expression to be hooked on something means that you are addicted to something or you want to do something as much as possible. In Erica's case, she was very excited about preparing her sourdough bread. So here we can say that she was hooked on her new hobby. To be hooked. Don't forget, para bajarte la transcripción, la ficha de vocabulario y un test de comprensión, te dejamos el enlace en las notas del programa. Okay, let's get into the story. So my name is Erica, and I live in Basel, Switzerland. Uh, however, I am from uh, Ljubljana, Slovenia. 
Slovenia, it's a bread eating country. We have different sorts of bread, different grain flour combinations. And um, I used to bake a lot with my grandmother. Even before I went to preschool, I would stay with my grandmother during the day when my parents were working. And on Fridays, we would always make bread in her wood-burning oven. And I think this is how my love for baking started. My grandmother would always give me pieces of dough for me to shape. And um, those would then be my, um, my little bread. She would teach me how to stretch the bread, how to knead the bread. So those are my very vivid memories that I always kept. And it developed from there. When I first moved to Switzerland, I didn't have a full-time job. I was taking a lot of German classes, and then I was also baking cakes um, for orders. And I did that. However, that's, it's kind of a lonely job to do. Even though Erica loved baking cakes as a hobby, this new cake baking business wasn't enjoyable. So she stopped baking cakes and found a more normal office job. But she still loved baking and was open to trying out something new. At the very beginning of um, the lockdown in March last year, I've noticed on Instagram particularly and in different newspapers, all the articles about sourdough, people posting pictures of these breads that the crust looked incredible. And because sourdough takes a lot of time to make, then there were also online courses popping up how to start your own sourdough starter. Sourdough starter is a combination of flour and water that you keep out um, at room temperature for 12 to 14 days to allow the bacteria to grow. And then this is then used instead of yeast in um, cultivating the dough itself, bread dough. And then my partner Lucas took a course Um, It was a few day long course and he started his first sourdough starter and his first attempt was not that successful, but then he did not give in and he tried again and got successful and started baking bread. Seeing how successful Lucas was got Erica interested in trying to make sourdough bread herself. Working from home because of the lockdown, as we'll hear, allowed her to dedicate the time necessary to the long process of making this bread. So then I got really interested and I was like, huh, maybe I should um, do this on my own. So I took part of his sourdough starter and I cultivated and fed it myself. I took the recipe uh, from the course he did, and I watched many YouTube videos. How do you fold? How do you stretch? So during meetings, I would be able to stand up, um, fold and stretch my bread and leave it for another half an hour and be on the next meeting and then continue like that. And for what's The difference between um, the breads I baked before, they were never completely covered. And this one was in this pot in a Dutch oven that I couldn't look in because I love looking into the oven while something uh, is baking. I was wondering, is it going to rise well? Is it going to be crunchy and beautiful? And for the first time, it was really quite surprising how well it turned out. And I think it was from the first time on that I was hooked. And so began Erica's sourdough bread making adventures. She started experimenting with recipes. She tried adding nuts and seeds and even tested out different flours to see how they changed the texture and taste of the bread. 
Erica soon discovered that she wasn't the only person excited about sourdough bread. There was a whole community of bakers out there. I got really involved in the sourdough community. I was seeing it everywhere. There are many sourdough bakers on Instagram. I was really following the communities online, seeing what people were baking. Then I saw in a Swiss newspaper, for example, that a sourdough hotel opened in, um, in Zurich. I was really surprised and I wanted to find out what was the sourdough hotel be. And then I saw that when you go on holidays and you can't leave your sourdough starter at home because there's no one who would feed it, um, you can take it to the sourdough hotel with your preferred blend of flowers and they would feed it for you on the regular basis as you would feed it at home. Why, I think everyone might be asking themselves, why do you want to keep your sourdough alive, right? Longer you have it, the stronger the bacteria um, in the sourdough, in the sourdough starter is, and it produces better sourdough, sourdough um, products, right? So there on internet, you can even buy 50-year-old starters. There seemed to be a sourdough craze, una moda, happening in most parts of Europe and the U.S., and Erica was loving it. Kneading, stretching, and baking sourdough during meetings, and trying different flours. She quickly became the bread lady to her friends. My friends started calling me the bread lady because also during the quarantine, there were so many restaurants closed. And for a few gatherings with friends, when we organized brunches, my friends asked me to bake the sourdough breads. And I don't just do the ones that kind of are standard. I mix and match different flours. I add seeds. I add sun-dried tomatoes. Um, I made baguettes, uh, focaccia. Actually, one of my close friends asked me as um, for her birthday gift, I could give her coupons for um, different bread types, for different sourdoughs that she could cash in during the year. I definitely find a lot of gratification baking bread. I like the whole process. I think it's expressing myself through something that tastes good. Because giving bread or giving cakes, it's all the same for me. It's making my friends and people around me happy. We hope that listening to this podcast about delicious bread made you feel hungry. Nowadays, Erica is still in Switzerland experimenting with new and wonderful sourdough bread recipes. As you can imagine, she was so excited to share her detailed knowledge, so we have prepared a little bonus section for those of you who are interested in learning why this bread is so special. What's different about sourdough in comparison to yeast bread is that it's also baked in a Dutch oven, which is a metal pot that is heated up very at a very high temperature and the bread is then tipped into it covered with the lid so that it protects its moisture and that the um, crust gets very crunchy and it's baked for about 40 minutes at 230 degrees and it produces very crunchy crust And sourdough, it's actually easier to digest. And people who might have different intolerances, um, they digest sourdough much better than bread with yeast. And sourdough stays fresh for a really long time. It stays really fresh for about five days, which is definitely a plus. And I think why it's so popular and its crunchiness. There's nothing better than cutting this freshly baked, crunchy crust. 
And that's all for season two of Into the Story. Si has empezado a escuchar hace poco, tienes 30 episodios con sus transcripciones, vocabulario clave y test de comprensión ahora en la web haceingles.com. Te dejamos el enlace en las notas del programa. Ok, until next time, we hope that you have a good time, or at least a good story to tell.